what's going on guys clickwood here back again bringing you guys another episode of my madden 16 ultimate team budget series and today guys what we're talking about is the wide receiver position we're going to go into some players who are very low priced that can really help out your team and i think that they're actually very comparable to some of the more expensive wide receivers in the game this is a good way for you guys to save coins and build up your coins so that you can purchase players that are better at other positions that make a little bit more of a difference so if you want to save up and you want to get yourself a night train lane or somebody like that when they come out this is a good way to do it you save money you get yourself some cheap wide receivers some cheap running backs like we saw before in the previous video and if you guys want to see that previous running back video check out at the end of this video we'll link back to that one so with that being said, guys, let's start off here and let's take a look at some of the wide receiver categories that I have broken out here. We're going to talk about some different style of wide receivers to, that you guys can actually look at with your teams, uh, build your team the way that you want to. So I would recommend kind of a combination of these different types of receivers. You don't really want to build an entire team with just one style of receivers. So take a look at each one of these and see kind of the pluses and the minuses of each one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the possession wide receivers. And these guys, these are the guys who kind of are more built to go over the middle that can hold on to the ball, catching the ball in traffic, making nice spectacular catches, and they just have good solid catching attributes. They're not the fastest, they're not necessarily the biggest, but they're solid possession wide receivers. A lot of these guys are also built to go and play out of the slot, so keep that in mind. Now, guys, just like always, we're going to be comparing guys on the left here who are our budget players, and we're going to compare them to more expensive players on the right. Now, we're not necessarily saying that the player on the left is better than the player on the right or anything like that, but these are just for comparison purposes so that you can see kind of the price difference between some of these players and what they're good at and what they're not so good at. So on the left side of your screen, you've got Marcus Colston. He's going for about 15,000 coins. Uh, this is the Football Outsiders Marcus Colston, still readily available on the auction block, and we're comparing him to the team. MVP Richard Matthews, which is going for about 150,000 coins. So uh, again, guys, just like always, green in the attribute means that they're better. Red means that it's worse. And yellow means that it's exactly the same between the two cards. So again, what we're seeing here, guys, on the left side of your screen, a lot of red, obviously. We're seeing Marcus Colston's not as fast. He doesn't have as great of acceleration. Uh, and even some of the things like his release, his route running, um, those types of things are not as high as the Richard Matthews. But again, what we're really looking at is we're trying to find players that can go over the middle and catch those passes in traffic. And uh, if you throw them, you know, deep over the middle and that kind of thing so they can go up and get the ball in traffic and make the catch. So things that I usually look for, I want some height out of my receiver. I understand typically the slot players are in the NFL tend to be a shorter players, but that's not necessarily how it has to be in Madden. Uh, Madden is obviously different than the real NFL. You want size out of your receiver if you can get it in Madden. So uh, definitely I like Marcus Colston because he is six foot four. That's a big advantage that we have over some of the other players that would typically be a possession wide receiver. He does again have slow speed and acceleration, but again, we're not really trying to do anything that is going to get him crazy separation. We're not running corner routes. We're not running streaks or anything like that. What we're doing is typically running slants, uh, maybe some plays where they go uh, like a, uh, an up and in, uh, maybe a post route, things like that. Various different routes routes like that that can kind of go over the middle and uh, and make catches in traffic if they need to against linebackers or even against cornerbacks and safeties. So the things that I like to look for, catching I think is extremely important obviously with any wide receiver. He's got 94 catching, which is a very nice attribute. It's not the highest that you're going to find, but among wide receivers, it's pretty darn good. He also has 98 catch in traffic. That is a very, very high attribute. That means that while he's getting hit or while he, there are guys right next to him, he is not going to drop the ball very often. Often, and that can be extremely important. You guys all know that you have had situations where you hit your wide receiver and yeah, he might be in a little bit of traffic, but he really should make the catch and he doesn't. That's a lot of times due to the fact that they have a low catch in traffic rating. So uh, that's why I really like, again, this Marcus Colston because he has that 98 catch in traffic. And if you compare that to Richard Matthews, he's only got a 95, which by itself is still really, really good, but it's three lower than Marcus Colston at a 98. And again, if you even compare the catching 94 to a 95, Five between these two cards, very, very similar, and you're not going to really notice any difference between that. Now, the spectacular catch for Marcus Colston is a little bit lower. It's only an 88. It's not a great rating for a wide receiver, but it's decent enough. It's not going to be, you know, he's not going to go out there and make the Odell Beckham type catches very often, but he'll do it on occasion. But the one thing that I really like about this card, he doesn't have quite as high of an attribute.
rate in this as the Richard Matthews, but it's still really good, is his release. So if you do have somebody that goes up and presses you at the line of scrimmage, Marcus Colston utilizing his strength, which is an 80, and that's pretty high for a wide receiver, in combination with his release, he is going to be able to get off of that press and get open a lot easier than a lot of these other wide receivers. So that's something I definitely really like about Marcus Colston. Unfortunately, he doesn't really have great attributes for after the catch. He doesn't have great elusiveness. Obviously, it's a 48. That is extremely low for a wide receiver. Uh, his agility is mediocre at an 85. His juke is an 81. None of those things are particularly great, but the bottom line is that he's going to go be able to go over the middle and make those catches in traffic, and that could be extremely important for continuing your offense and uh, you know making the catches for first downs and even potentially in the end zone in traffic where uh, you know it's it's more difficult for some of the the less uh, possession built wide receivers to make those catches in the end zone with guys on top of them. So that is your possession wide receiver. I really recommend Marcus Colston as somebody that you could look into. Fifteen thousand coins is pretty darn cheap for him, and uh, he's definitely going to do a good job for you if you go ahead and pick him up right now. So let's move on and let's start talking about some wide receivers that are a little bit more exciting. Possession is not too exciting for most people. This is where the big money is made, I think, in Madden 16 for a lot of people. This is your your uh, jump ball wide receiver. So these are the guys that go up and get the aggressive catches. Yes, I understand aggressive catching is probably one of the most broken things in Madden 16 this year. Even after the patches, it's still extremely difficult to stop. And that's why I definitely wanted to make a separate setting here, a separate uh, category of wide receiver for jump ball wide receivers because it's something that I think is extremely important and just about everybody needs to have at least one of these guys on your roster. So the guy that we're looking at here on the left side of your screen is going for 4,000 coins, super, super cheap, Malcolm Floyd, six foot five wide receiver. And we're going to be comparing him to Calvin Johnson, 89 overall. This is the base elite Calvin Johnson going for 110,000 coins still. So uh, very, very nice. Nice Calvin Johnson card, obviously. Uh, everybody knows Megatron is one of my favorite players. He actually is my favorite NFL player right now. So I'm not going to hate on Calvin Johnson. But as far as his Mutt card goes... He's not quite as great as you might think that he would be. And actually, if you're looking at a pure jump ball wide receiver, Malcolm Floyd is probably actually better. And I know that sounds just sacrilege to even say, but it's true. Malcolm Floyd goes up and gets the ball better than Calvin Johnson. So let's take a look at the attributes that matter here. Now, obviously, speed Malcolm Floyd doesn't have it. 84 speed is pretty mediocre for a wide receiver. He's not going to get a lot of separation against most corners. Maybe if he's going up against like a Brent Grimes or somebody that's super slow, he might be able to get the separation, but most people aren't running cornerbacks that are slow because they know how ineffective they are against most wide receivers. So Malcolm Floyd isn't going to get that deep ball separation. You're not going to be able to run a streak and run, uh, get the rat catch and just, you know, burn them for an 80 yard touchdown. You're going to have to go up and you're going to have to make an aggressive catch with these guys. So what we want to see is some that has good jumping, good catching, good catch in traffic, good spec catch, and also release. It can also be pretty important as well because we want to make sure that they get off the line and they don't get jammed. So that's why I think that Malcolm Floyd is very, very good. The only attribute that he is actually lower than Calvin Johnson in right now is catching out of those ones that I think are the most important for the jump ball wide receivers. His catching is 90, which isn't spectacular. And I understand, obviously, catching is the most important thing for a wide receiver. I'm not going to say it's not. It is. But you look at it, it's still a 90. That's still decent. It's not as good as Calvin Johnson at a 95. But where he does make up for it is the fact that he has better acceleration than Calvin Johnson. If, you, if you're looking at just like getting off of a press or something like that. Uh, he also has better jumping. He's, he's got a 97 jump, whereas Calvin Johnson's only got a 96. And then you look at the catch in traffic, which is extremely important, just like the possession wide receivers. When there's a cornerback blanketing them or a safety over the top and things like that, you need to have good catch in traffic. He has a 93 catch in traffic along with a 97 spectacular catch. 97 spectacular catch. That is crazy, crazy high for a gold card. And that's what Malcolm Floyd brings to the table. Now, where he's not so good, he doesn't have great Again, just like the Marcus Colston in the previous slide, doesn't have great juke moves, spin moves, doesn't have great run block or anything like that. His agility is relatively low in comparison to other wide receivers. So he's not somebody that you're going to be able to really throw the ball to and have him make great plays after the catch. But again, that's not necessarily what we're looking to do with Malcolm Floyd. We want him to go basically on a streak and we want single coverage against the cornerback and we throw it up to him and hit that triangle button. Or if you're on Xbox, you hit that Y button and hopefully he comes down with the ball. 
That's what Malcolm Floyd is built for, and that's what he's going to go do for you guys. 4,000 coins. Extremely cheap. Try him out. If you don't like him, so what? You lose a couple hundred coins and sell them back on the auction block. It's not that big of a deal, but I'm telling you guys, if you t try this card out and you don't currently have a jump ball wide receiver, or if you have somebody like Calvin Johnson and he's not really doing it for you, or he's, you know, you could use the coins that 110,000 or whatever that you would get for selling Calvin Johnson, you can use it at another position. Try out out Malcolm Floyd because he is going to really do a great job on these jump ball aggressive catches and that can really do some serious damage against your opponent so again I highly recommend Malcolm Floyd go out there and try him out extremely cheap 4,000 coins definitely well worth the price so let's move on and let's talk about now our deep threat wide receivers. And I know what you're thinking. Didn't we just talk about deep threat wide receivers? Well, kind of, but this is a little bit of a different category. We're more talking about speed built wide receivers now. Uh, these guys are not as big and physical, but they're more built to go deep and uh, beat the defense with that rat catch. So what we're really looking for in this type of card is that we need somebody that has good speed, good acceleration, and good catching. Those are really the most important things. Now, before I even get started here, I want to point out there is another card out here that a lot of people prefer over the one that I have here, and that's Brashad Perriman. Brashad Perriman is like, I, I think he's like 71 overall. He's a silver card, but he goes for 20,000 coins, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that people like T-Raw and other uh, really good Madden players this year have utilized the, the Brashad Perriman and actually done some serious damage with him, doing exactly what I'm going to recommend that you do with these guys, which is basically send them on streaks, and if you see the safety not get over there quick enough, they're pretty much going to burn any cornerback on a pure streak. So uh, yeah, again, try these cards out on streaks. That's really the best way to do it. But Again, I, what I wanted to look at here was a card, not Burchard Perriman in this case, because he actually, if you compare him to the card that I have here, he's a lot lower in a lot of the pure catching attributes. Uh, he is a little bit faster, and he is six foot three, so he does have a little bit of an advantage there in a couple of different ways. But I actually prefer JJ Nelson, and uh, this is the team of the week. JJ Nelson, eighty-two overall gold card for the uh, Arizona Cardinals, and we're comparing him to Deshaun Jackson, the flashback Deshaun Jackson, which is going for. 185,000 coins right now. He's 91 overall. And uh, JJ Nelson's only going for 7K. So he's quite a bit cheaper, obviously, than the Deshaun Jackson. And he's even quite a bit cheaper than the Burchard Perriman. If you don't like JJ Nelson, try out Perriman. But uh, either way, both those cards are very, very good for doing what we're talking about here, which is going deep and stretching out the defense. So again, what I really look for, I like speed and acceleration. You've got a 96 speed attribute here with JJ Nelson and a 96 acceleration. So as far as pure speed goes, he He's actually faster than Deshaun Jackson. And I know that's crazy because you would actually think Deshaun Jackson might be the fastest card overall in this entire game. That is not the case. Jackson is very, very quick, but he's actually slower than some of these cards like J.J. Nelson. So I definitely like Nelson in that attribute. The other thing is that he does have a good catch in traffic as well. He's got a 91 catch in traffic. That is extremely, extremely high for a player like this that is more speed built. A lot of the players that have good catch in traffic are the players that are either a slot receiver like, say, a Wes Welker, or else your big guys like a Calvin Johnson or uh, you know somebody like that that can go up and catch the ball in traffic. But J.J. Nelson has great attributes in just about everything. He's got good jumping at a 91 as well. Um, some of the areas where he isn't quite as good, his route running is only a 73. That is extremely low among a wide receiver. Uh, so he's not going to do a great job of creating separation underneath. But the bottom line is that when we're sending him on a streak, he's not really doing anything to like make a cut or make the defense react. He's just going deep. And that's pretty much what I look for out of a J.J. Nelson card. I think that's the best way to utilize him. Send him on that streak route and see if it gets open. If it doesn't, obviously, you check it down underneath. But uh, a lot of people will definitely like this card if you if you try some of those plays that get the wide receiver open deep. You'll have to look around on YouTube or on various different other sites or eBooks to actually find some, uh, some plays that will actually get these receivers deep. And maybe I'll show something at some point that I like to use. Uh, but even if you use a four verticals type of play against most defenses, J.J. Nelson is actually going to beat the defense a lot of times. So definitely go out here, try out J.J. Nelson. He is a little bit lower, like I said, in some of these other attributes, but for the most part, he is still a really, really good wide receiver. He also actually does a great job with the ball in his hands. So if you want to use him as a punt returner, he can actually do a good job in that attribute as well. Uh, he does have some, you know, things like the, the juke moves, the spin moves, uh, not quite as good as Deshaun Jackson, but still really good in most of those different things. So again, I really like JJ Nelson. Test him out, see what you guys think. And if you don't like him, try out Brashad Perriman as well, because Perriman is also really, really good. So next one, and this is the last one that I wanted to get into. This 
this is your run blocking wide receiver. So I don't necessarily uh, recommend that you have a wide receiver that's specifically built for this on your, you know, in in your lineup on every single play. But if you want to actually have somebody out there that can get some pancake blocks for you and somebody that can uh, do some damage against a lot of cornerbacks, this is something that you might want to consider doing because players like Michael Floyd or like Anquan Bolden can actually go out there and they can make plays as a receiver, obviously, but they actually do a pretty darn good job blocking as well. So if you decide to run a toss or or a run to their side of the field of any sort, they're going to do a lot better job than, say, you know, on the previous slide, J.J. Nelson. He's not going to do a very good job run blocking. So this is something that I like to do with my wide receivers. I like to have at least one guy who I can put out there and do a run block with. So in this case, we're talking about Michael Floyd. He is going for 8,000 coins. This is the team of the week, Michael Floyd, and uh, he's 84 overall. We're going to be comparing him to Anquan Bolden on the right side of your screen. This is 170,000 coin card. Card. Very, very expensive. 92 overall. He is a great card. I'm not going to try and say that he isn't, but he does lack in some areas that I think you might find to be somewhat important. So obviously, uh, um, the bottom line here that we're looking at is run blocking. So those two attributes are toward the bottom right side of your screen. What I look for in run blocking are strength and the pure run blocking attribute. There are also things like run block strength and run block footwork. Those things do not matter. And if you want some more information on that, check back to my Madden 15 Mythbusters video that I did in regards to offensive line attributes and what things matter and what things don't. Uh, the actual run block strength, pass block strength, run block footwork, pass block footwork. Those things are 100% irrelevant. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but you're just going to have to trust me on this or else watch the video and you'll see uh, how it works. But the run block attribute and the pass block attribute purely are the things that matter among blocking. So in this case, again, we want strength. We want run block. Now, again, I'm not going to say Michael Floyd is better. Obviously, he's quite a bit lower in strength than Bolden, and he's a little bit lower in run block, but he's quite a bit higher than most other wide receivers. Anquan Bolden is actually probably the best pure blocker in this game, maybe other than Heinz Ward at wide receiver. And Heinz Ward obviously is extremely expensive. Most people can't afford him. Most people can't afford Anquan Bolden either, especially when you're talking about him being a role player like this in your offense. These guys are not necessarily meant to be your every down wide receiver. There's somebody that you mix in and you put him in in a, a specific situation where you need them on the field for run blocking. Or you can also, you know, if somebody starts to pick up on the fact that you're putting these guys on the field, then you can actually start to throw to them a little bit too to kind of keep them honest. But the bottom line, again, we want strength, run block. Michael Floyd is very, very good. I, I wish I could had another slide on here that I could compare him to an average wide receiver, but you're just going to have to trust me. His strength and his run block are quite a bit higher than most other wide receivers, especially ones that are you know anywhere under 25,000 coins. It's hard to find somebody that has a better attribute than Michael Floyd in those types of things. So again, he is a really, really good overall wide receiver as well, which is uh, a little bit different than Anquan Bolden. If you compare some of these attributes, the speed, the uh, the jumping, the spectacular catch, the agility. Uh, Michael Floyd actually kind of blows Anquan Bolden out of the water in a lot of these different things, especially the spectacular catch. Um, and, and the other thing too is that Michael Floyd is also six foot three, whereas Bolden is only six foot one. Floyd can go up and actually do some of those spectacular catch and traffic type things that we were talking about previously with some of our other wide receivers. Um, and that's the thing that I really like about Michael Floyd is that he is very versatile. You can use him as a wide receiver or you can use him as a run blocker and it's difficult for the defense to be able to actually pick up on it and decide exactly what you're going to do based on having that receiver on the field. Whereas Bolden, I kind of feel like he's kind of just not really built to do a whole lot. Yeah, he can be a possession receiver. Obviously, he's got good catching, good catch in traffic, and good release and that kind of thing. But his speed is so low. His uh, his height isn't great. His acceleration is okay, but it's not spectacular. He, and then after the fact, or after the catch, he's really not very good either. So to me, I, I just think if you're actually looking looking for somebody to be uh, more of, of a dual threat at wide receiver in addition to run blocking, also be able to go up and, and make catches. I actually prefer Michael Floyd in a lot of cases. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. But 8,000 coins for Floyd versus 170,000 coins for Bolden, I don't think that – I think that the prices there kind of just speak for themselves. Uh, obviously, Floyd is a lot more affordable for people. So if you don't have the money to spend on Bolden and you need a run blocker, go out there and pick up Michael Floyd. So there you have it, guys. That is the wide receiver list. Uh, and guys, what we're going to do here is we're going to continue to put together uh, these budget 
positions. Uh, and, and again, I'm not really having a specific order that I'm putting them in. It could be in any order. So if you have any idea of what you want to see next, I think the most common, uh, people the most common responses that I got from people in the comments section was that you guys preferred to see uh the offensive line next so that's what I'm planning on doing but if you want to see a different position before that let me know in the comment section below and I will try to get to that as soon as possible if it gets enough responses so thank you guys so much for all the support hope you enjoyed the video if you did do me a favor click that like button subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll talk to you guys again soon Hey guys, if you're enjoying my videos, do me a favor, click that subscribe button on the right side of your screen right now. Otherwise, you can always check out my previous video by clicking on the left side of the screen. Thank you guys again.